I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. I know what you're thinking, this was a tragic story, allow the family to grieve, move on. Well, in true crime, we could say the same about the John Bonnet Ramsey case, officially still unsolved after 27 years this Christmas, or Madeleine McCann, officially unsolved 16 years later, or any case really. But what happens when we do think a little deeper? And a little further when we are brave enough to take that step. I mean, what happens when we dare to think about something? Who's gonna pick you up when you fall? So I want to challenge you to think about the Gaynor Lord case without thinking about it. Did you know that just three years ago, a 48 year old woman, a popular teaching assistant, also died in the River Wensum? She died on February 18th, a Tuesday, in 2020. Claire Kerrison's body was found just three days later by divers. Her medical cause of death was recorded as drowning and cold water immersion. According to the Eastern Daily Press, a local newspaper, quote, Mrs. Kerrison was a teaching assistant at St. Augustine's Catholic Primary School in Costasi, In its latest newsletter, the school thanked the community for its support and encouraged children to focus on positive memories of Mrs. Kerrison. Shouldn't we do the same with Gaynor and Nicola? Just think positive. Move on. What about 55-year-old Peter Baglin, who vanished almost a month to the day before Nicola Bully in the Bridgewater Canal just 35 miles away from where Nicola Bully went missing? His body was found about a month after Nicola's was. In other words, it took about two months, twice as long, to find by law enforcement, except minus the whole foul play circus. The circumstances were the same, with a few slight variations. He headed out by himself. Phone, had headphones were found beside the canal. No foul play was suspected. If he fell into the canal by accident, how come his phone, headphones and hat didn't go into the canal with him? I don't know about you, but I find the speculation that there's a serial killer on the loose going around Britain around Christmas, pushing people into rivers, quite absurd. Does this serial killer have an invisibility cloak? And what's his motive that he hates Christmas? What's also insulting about this cure-all explanation, such a simple, easy explanation, is it removes all the interiority of the victim and turns them and their phantasmic murderer into empty vessels. Is that because they are empty vessels? That they are lacking in thoughts, inner processes and imaginations? Or because we are? Do you remember when Gaynor's friend spoke about she really wished she hadn't cut her off, she hadn't ended that call, you kind of got a sense of of Gaynor and you got a sense of her through someone else's humanity. Who's gonna hang it up when you call? I don't think you have to be Sherlock Holmes or a Cassandra to see a pattern, not only between the victims but the survivors. You simply got to be willing to try. Willing to care, I guess. In August 2020, an inquest was held into the death of Claire Kerrison, this popular and apparently happy 48-year-old teaching assistant who died in the River Wensum. And you're probably going to have a similar thing taking place with Gaynor. You're going to have an inquest. It's going to come out months later, and it's probably going to sound a lot like this one. Her husband said she was a lovely person, kind, non-judgmental, and passionate about her job. A statement read out on behalf of her husband described how the pair had known each other for 25 years and had been married for almost 19, during which time they never argued and had a wonderful marriage. Senior coroner Jacqueline Lake 
gave a narrative conclusion that Mrs. Kerrison died from drowning and that evidence she had heard did not reveal her intention. And that's it. So three years later, Claire's death is regarded as strange, inexplicable, and unexplained. Or is it? The same article that seems to focus on what a wonderful and happy person Claire was on the surface, and I'm sure she was, makes a passing remark about something that wasn't so wonderful. Quoting from the article, On Thursday, an inquest into her death held at Norfolk Coroner's Court heard how the death of her mother in September 2019 had left her heartbroken and in shock. And here we're dealing with Claire's mother. Claire's mother died in September 2019. Claire's mother died in September 2019 and then early the following year, mid-February, Claire died. Any possible relationship between those two events? Unlike Gaynor and Nicola, but much like Peter Baglin, Claire suddenly left home at 11 p.m. on that fateful Tuesday night and never returned. The coroner's official report states that evidence she had heard did not reveal her intention. So who is in denial here? And the interesting thing about painting a silver lining on these sorts of tragedies is it provides a precedent. You know, every time you paint a silver lining, you create a path, a pathway for every case that follows. And the precedent is, let's not talk about what was wrong. And let's be in a rush to get back to normal and to, to be positive and to put positive appearances on something. And in a sense, to blame some phantasmic person, serial killer, whatever, and in this situation, even in the face of death, let's not, let's not think about it. I mean, it is literally the denial of death. I do wonder, you know, that awkward feeling that you may be feeling, that feeling of let's not talk about this, let's not utter certain words, let's not go there, is probably the same wall that Claire and Nicola and Gaynor faced. You know, if, some, if someone was willing to break down that emotional barrier and just be a human being and admit weakness and admit sometimes not feeling so great and letting down their guard and saying, sometimes I'm not terribly happy about what's going on and allow the mask to be put aside for a spell. You know, if one person does that, then someone else going through the same thing, might not feel so alone, might not feel so ashamed, might, might not feel so trapped in their own circumstances. But the fact of the matter is we are a society of surfaces and we do a lot to keep up those appearances. And because of that, we don't seem to know about those who are drowning just below the surface right in front of us. Time and again, you have people in true crime, in these high-profile cases, the Chris Watts case, so many cases where people seem to be living fairy tales. Meanwhile, someone in that fairy tale is going through a nightmare, but nobody knows. And instead of murdering themselves, they murder somebody else. Why don't we know that someone right next to us is drowning in terms of their lives, in terms of what's happening to them? Because we don't have any practice and we don't have any practice because it's kind of institutionalized, because we all participate in the denial, which is what drives these tragedies in the first place. Because it's never discussed, people simply have no idea really what's going on. But the stats speak for themselves. Did you know in South Korea, 74.2% of drowning cases, that's almost three quarters, in a statistical sample between 1998 and 2011, had drowned themselves intentionally. So of all those drownings, three quarters were intentional. A Swedish study over a similar period found almost a third of drownings to be intentional. The highest incidence in Sweden was among women aged 50 and above. In the most basic way, when I mentioned on this channel that 
gainers seem to be recklessly and even dangerously dodging traffic. There was quite a lot of pushback. People didn't want to hear about that. People argued and said, no, everyone does that. It's, it's not a big deal. And how dare you even begin to speculate that something might be wrong? And yet when you look at the footage in context, from an expanded perspective, you see how the second vehicle breaks at the last moment. It's not traveling that slowly either. And the left front of the vehicle very narrowly misses Gaynor at the last moment. And so I'm asking you, who's, who's going to tell you when it's too late? Who's going to tell you things aren't so great? Who's going to pick you up when you fall? Who's going to hang it up when you call? Who's going to pay attention to your dreams? Who's going to plug your ears when you scream? These are all words from that song by the cars. But most of all, can you go on thinking nothing's wrong? When something is wrong, when something has gone wrong, can you go on thinking nothing's wrong? Should we go on thinking nothing's wrong? We've had Nic the Nicola Bully case, and I know what most of you are think, think about that case. We've now got the, we've had this Gainer, Gainer Lord case. Are we going to not really think about it until the next case? Or are we going to think about it now? Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.